on television. And who wouldn't? Who wouldn't want to be on a small screen broadcasted to millions of viewers across this great country because pop culture is what we live for. It's the glue that keeps us stuck to our lazy boys, tuned into the trivial pursuit of mindless entertainment that we love to hate but somehow can't get away from because we really have to get that latest fix of instant gratification with Kanye West, Kim Kardashian, Beyonce, elevators, reality shows, and soap operas. But now, pop culture has a new flavor. Ladies and gentlemen, the buzzword for today is gay exploitation. The first time I saw two gay characters on a major network sitcom, I almost flipped my lid until I realized what I was watching. Reminding me of that time I saw that movie, The Birdcage, with my father. He and I both laughed, but my daddy laughed the way society laughed. All those limp-wristed sissies walking with the swish, talking with the lisp, and I can't forget the punchline to every homophobic joke those high school days when I was told, silly faggot, dicks are for chicks, but these days, we, the few, the proud, the gay have been assimilated entertainment purposes only. We are the queerest folk, RuPaul's drag race, queer eyes for the straight guy, bringing you makeovers, fashion tips, and laughs at our expense. But I guess it's better to make the small screen as an actor instead of a victim of ignorance statistic on the six o'clock news. But how many hate crimes have gone unreported and what has gay exploitation really changed? Because I still can't forget the time I got beat against a bloody pulp and maybe that's my fault for being this way, for choosing to be gay in a world where my kind is subjected to an intolerance so rigid that parents will disown their children because the Vatican said it wasn't right with the Most High, prompting former President Bush to push for legislation that defines marriage as a bond between a man and a woman under the pretense that same-sex civil unions will somehow corrupt this institution, but Mr. President, let me give you a fact you might want to consider. 51% of all marriages between men and women end in divorce. This straight world is afraid to legitimize us as human beings, and we're not. Not to the millions that watch us each week. To them, we are novelties, commodities, court jesters making fools of ourselves, and I want to be on television. But I don't need half an hour. Just give me 15 minutes of Flame to clear the screen, wiping away that will and grace, slap in the face to tell them that being gay is not just who you sleep with, it's who you fall in love with. To show them that we are so much more than shallow souls with matching clothes, we are Oscar Wilde, Keith Haring, Bitter Rust, and Rock Hudson, Tennessee Williams, William Burroughs, and Freddie fucking Mercury. We are poets, artists, writers, musicians, actors, and activists, but we are nothing to laugh at. Woo!